Hi, welcome to our introductory video for SCS Enviro Plus, a software utility used for electromagnetic environmental impact studies. In this tutorial, you will learn how to create a new project, compute coronal performances, and how to display results using SCS Enviro Plot. To open the application, double click on the SCS software folder, here located on the desktop. Then locate and double click on the SCS Enviro Plus icon. Depending on whether you have previously created a project with SES Enviro Plus, when the application launches, the job identification and working directory window will either already be on top of the main screen, or you will have to click on the new button in the ribbon to open this window. Either way, once you have this window open, you'll notice it's two fields at the top. The first one, the working directory, is for you to specify where all of your input and output files for your various case studies will be stored. For this video, we've selected a folder called SES Enviro Plus Tutorial, located on our Z drive. The second field, Current Job ID, is for entering the name of your project, which in this case we'll call simply My Project. Upon clicking OK, the My Project project is created and stored in our working directory, and the project name now appears at the top of the main screen. Also on the main screen, we have the Project Description and Module Description fields, where you have the option of entering a description of your model. Within the Options panel, you can specify certain parameters for your project, for example, the frequency and the system of units, which in this case will keep a metric, which is the default value. To define the soil resistivity, we make the appropriate selection on the left side of the screen. And here we see that the default soil resistivity is 100 ohm meters. We'll keep this default value for this video tutorial. Transmission line parameters are defined in the System Configuration module, to create a new circuit, you begin by clicking on the Add Row to Grid icon. And here we will import phase conductor characteristics from SCS Library by clicking here. A separate video tutorial is available for showing how to filter and select items from SCS Library, so we won't show those steps in this video, but we'll simply note that we've selected a Bluebird conductor of the ACSR class from SCS Library. Once the conductor characteristics are imported, we'll find the conductor radius here and we'll set the bundle radius to 0.1 meters. By default, the number of subconductors in the bundle is set to 4, and the start angle is set at 45 degrees. This is the angle between the horizontal positive x-axis and the first subconductor in the bundle. If you needed to specify an offset for your y and z coordinates, you would set the value in the relative coordinates column to yes. The phases and neutrals are defined here. Here we're adding three phases to our model by clicking on this button three times. The Y coordinates are related to the horizontal distance of the phase from the tower. And for our three phases, we will set values of negative two meters, zero meters, and positive two meters. For the Z average coordinates, we'll enter a value of 20 meters for each phase. The Z average coordinates correspond to the average height of the bundle center between towers, taking into account line sag. The Z actual coordinates correspond to the height of the bundle directly above the observation point. Here we'll enter a value of 18 meters for each bundle. Characteristics of a conductor are affected to a certain degree by a surface condition, and this is taken into account in this column. We would enter 0 for a brand new conductor and 1 for an old conductor. Typical conductor values vary from 0.3 to 0.4. We'll use 0.3 for our example. Next we'll select the Neutrals tab, where we can begin defining the characteristics of our two neutrals after clicking here twice. We begin by selecting neutral N1, and then we click here to access SCS Library to select an appropriate conductor. Again, we're not showing steps specific to SCS Library in this video, but we see here that for our first neutral, we specified an Alcoa conductor from the OPTGW class. We proceed to select the same specification for the second neutral. Values for the coordinates and surface condition of the neutrals are entered in the remaining columns. Our circuit configuration is now defined, and we click on the Save button in the ribbon to save our project. Next we'll move to the Phase Energization module. Here we'll enter a value of 500 kilovolts, and this value will appear in the Phase Voltages table below, as part of the header of the column entitled Magnitude of Voltage. The 500 kilovolt value will essentially be a multiplier of any number entered in the cells of this column. 
By entering a value of 1 in each row, we are specifying a phase voltage of 500 kilovolts for each of our phases. In the next column, we specify phase angles of 0, 240, and 120 degrees. In the Observation Profiles module, we can define three types of profiles. Linear profiles, point profiles, and profiles of the surface of the conductors. We'll click here to add a new linear profile. Here you have the option of selecting a value for the type of profile. This field is set to all by default. Then you proceed to enter the appropriate quantities for the observation profile. A z-value of 0 indicates the profile is at the level of the ground. Within the Environmental Impact module, you can select your Corona performance methods. We see in the Evaluate tab that the radio button for all circuits is selected by default. However, if you wish, you can specify an individual circuit for the analysis. We'll be taking a look at radio interference, so we'll select the appropriate tab, and then to Semi-Empirical Methods, EDF, and BPA, and one Empirical Method, SIGRA. To process the computation, click on the Run button in the ribbon. Once the computation is complete, we close the process window, and we proceed to launch SCS Enviro Plot by selecting the Plot Results option from the View menu. When SES Enviro Plot opens, we select one of our computations, specifically EDF Radio Interference from the Computation Block Number Selection drop-down menu. Then we configure the axes of our plot, and with a choice of either the built-in or component plot engine, we select the built-in engine before finally clicking Plot. Here we're showing our plotted results showing radio interference over distance, as generated by the built-in engine, and again, radio interference over distance, as generated by the component plot engine. This concludes our video tutorial for STS Enviro Plus. Thank you for watching.